Who is the second Lone Ranger mystery deputy? Attention. Tonight we're going to play a special recording of a secret meeting between the Lone Ranger and his new mystery deputy. Listen carefully. See if you know who the mystery deputy is. If you do, you may win big cash prizes in Cheerio's sensational Lone Ranger Mystery Deputy Contest. Here are the voices of the Lone Ranger and his mystery deputy. Listen. Greetings, mystery deputy. Did you bring the secret plans? Here they are, Chief. They're complete to the last detail. Fine. Keep up the good work and report again in two days. Right. Shall I continue to keep my identity hidden? Yes, for a few more days. Adios. Adios, Lone Ranger. See you again today. There he is, the new mystery deputy, number two in the big Cheerios contest. He is one of America's most famous men. You know his name almost as well as you know your own. Who is he? We'll give you a clue who the Lone Ranger mystery deputy is at the end of tonight's program. Then, if you think you know the very famous person whose voice you have just heard, follow the easy contest rules, which I'll tell you about, and you may win $4,000 in cash. Here's how to enter the contest. Go to the Cheerios display at your grocer's and get a free entry blank for the Lone Ranger Mystery Deputy Contest. On the entry blank will be a space for you to write down the name of the mystery deputy and a space for you to tell us why the man you have named deserves the honor of being a mystery deputy. Fill out the entry blank or use sheet of paper. Then print your name and address and send it together with one box top from Cheerios, the delicious ready-to-eat cereal made from oats. Mail to The Lone Ranger, Box 100, Minneapolis, Minnesota. We'll give you that address again in a minute. You must also print on your entry blank the name and address of your grocer. Ask your grocer to help you identify the Lone Ranger mystery deputy and assist you in preparing your entry. If your grocer helps you and you indicate this on your entry blank, he will win a choice of beautiful Bendix front row television set with 10-inch picture screen and push-button tuning or Bendix console radio if you win first prize or the famous Bendix luggage-style three-way portable radio if you win a second prize. Now, here's something else. There's not just one winner in this sensational contest, but there will be hundreds of winners. First prize is $1,000. Then there are ten second prizes of $100 each and 253rd prizes of $10 each. Now, wait. That's only the beginning. Right after this contest is over, we will have another contest with a third mystery deputy. Yes, and after the third contest, we'll have a fourth. That means a total of over 1,000 prizes in all. Each contest lasts for nine days, then we judge the winners, and in the meantime, start a new contest. Yes, and here's the most terrific thing of all. In addition to all the other prizes, a Grand Slam prize of $3,000 in cash goes to the person who has sent in the best entry during all four contests. Now, you'll have to hurry and send in your entries for this second Lone Ranger Mystery Deputy Contest because it closes up tight on July 5th. That's less than one week from tonight. Complete contest rules are printed on the official entry blank, which you can get at your Cheerios display at your neighborhood grocers, so I won't repeat them here. Follow the rules on the entry blank and name the Lone Ranger Mystery Deputy. Then finish this sentence in 25 words or less. This Lone Ranger Mystery Deputy deserves this honor because... Remember, you must send your entry together with a box top from that delicious ready-to-eat cereal Cheerios to the Lone Ranger, Box 100, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yes, and don't forget that your entry must include the name and address of your grocer. Entry will not be counted unless you do this. Be sure to listen for the Lone Ranger Mystery Deputy Clues at the end of tonight's program. Now to continue our story. When he was overtaken on the trail and ordered at the point of a gun in the hands of a tough-looking man to go with him to Derek's hideout, John meekly once more experienced a panicky feeling. As they went along the trail, John glanced hurriedly around, hoping to see some sign of a masked man and Indian, but without success. By the time he and his companion reached a deserted cabin in the hills, 
John was sorry he had listened to the Lone Ranger. There was nothing he could do but stop and dismount. Oh, 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 oh. Get it. Hurry up, Ron. Get inside and meet Derek. Look, look, I... I really didn't know where this place was. Honest. I was bluffing back there when Shut I... Shut up and I... get moving. Oh. Inside. Hey, who's the half pipe? This little runt come into the cafe yapping about recognizing you when you rode away from town today. Uh, he said he knew where you were hiding out. We'll have to light out then. Maybe he told the sheriff all that, too. Nope, he didn't. Seems like people in town laugh at this little armory because he likes to make out he's tough and he's always getting bounced around by someone. He asked to go with the posse, but the sheriff wouldn't let him. So you knew who I was when you saw me, huh, Shorty? Well, <laughs> see, I... He <laughs> tried to get the men at the cafe to come out here to capture you for the reward, but they laughed at him. And the way he talked, though, I knew for once he wasn't putting on an act. All right, grab him, Pete. Hold his arm. I got him. No, let, let me go. Uh, listen. Either talk fast and tell how you found out where I was hiding and who I am, or I'll plant this big fist of mine across your mouth. Yes. Yes, I'll tell you honest. Start talking, then. It was part of a plan, me going to the cafe and saying that. What do you mean, a plan? Well, I met two hombres, a masked man and an Indian. They said they'd been trailing you and guessed you pulled that robbery. The masked man planned for me to go to the cafe and talk like I did. Masked man and an Indian? Don't make sense. Yes, it does, you fool. That masked hombre and the Indian have been after me for some time. I'm beginning to see all this straight now. The mask man said you might have planted someone there in town. If I talked and said I knew who those outlaws were, that someone would follow me and bring me right to you. The mask man and Indian were to follow, but they crossed me up. So that's it. They were going to follow, eh? Huh? And they used you for the fall guy. Well, it's too bad you listened to that mask man. But good for us. But what are you going to do, Bill? They followed. It's our chance to get rid of that hombre. <laughs> They didn't expect the half pint to get scared and squeal like it did. So they won't know we're expecting them. Let's get outside, Pronto, and bring that whining little hombre with you. We'll uh, wait in ambush and those two show up and fill them with lead. Then we'll give Shorty here what's coming to him. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Unknown to John Meekly when he left town, the Lone Ranger and Toto had seen him and had also seen the man Lou following. They had ridden along an arroyo which paralleled the trail and had witnessed Lou stop John. Then they followed. The Lone Ranger and Toto stayed some distance behind, relying on their ability to follow the hoof marks of the two they were trailing. When they reached the point where Lou and John had turned from the main trail to a branch trail, the Lone Ranger pulled to a halt. Hold oh, over, hold oh, oh, Easy now, now, the branch trail leads into the narrow valley on the right, Toto. I suspect the hideout is there. Ah. I hope we can get there before Derek breaks down Meekly and makes him talk, Toto. Derek will want to know how Meekly got his information. You think little man tell about us? Derek will get the truth from him once he starts. John Meekly isn't a coward, but his size has always been against him, and he knows it. As we ride the branch trail, I'll tell you how we'll approach the hideout so as to take them unawares. Meantime, Derek and the other two outlaws had hidden in ambush behind some large boulders a short way up the branch trail from the cabin. They had taken John's gun, and the little man stood with his hands tied behind his back between Derek and Pete. Finally, they heard hoofbeats approaching beyond a bend in the trail, just a short distance away from the boulders. Well, here they come. Set your guns at the bend. And the minute they appear, we'll all shoot. We won't have a chance. You'll never know what hit him. We'll settle shorty right after. All right, this is it. We'll come around the bend in a minute. Get set. No, you dirty crook. I won't let you ambush you. Oh, I'll you. I'll fix that shrimp. Oh. Hey, look. A white stallion on a paint. But it was empty saddle. Uh. I'll be... At least I can put a bullet in the run. Oh, oh I'm hit. Hold it, all of you. You're covered. Hey, they're above us on top of the boulders. Drop your gun. Drop them. They both got the drop on us. I'll get one of them. No, you're not going. No, I stopped the bullet. I give up. Oh. I give up. No. Coming down. Come on, Toto. Hey, 
That sure was good work, mister. Little fellow seemed to be all right. Are you hurt, John? No. No, I, I'm all right. I thought you forgot me. I told them about you. They made me do it. Yes, I know. But I saw what you did when you thought they were going to shoot us. You've got what it takes, John. Oh, I, I couldn't let them do it. But then the saddles were empty after all. Yes. We dismounted up trail a bit and sent the horses on. And we cut across to these boulders and climbed up just in time. I suspected an ambush, and this was the logical place. Gosh, that sure was smart figuring, mister. We'll get their horses, and we'll tie these crooks on them and take them to town. Here, I'll cut your cords. Put over here. This one. There you are. Now, get a gun. I think the people in town have a surprise coming. Let's get going. Just about dusk, the sheriff and the posse had returned to town and had gone to the cafe. They were inside talking over events of the day. Well, we didn't have any luck, but we'll try again tomorrow. Hey, Sheriff, what do you think about the talking they say John Meekly did in here early this afternoon? I think just what the rest of you think. Poor little John was just acting up again. He heard about Derek or read that handbill I got across the street. Just decided to tell that story. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was sure talking tough, Sheriff. Yeah. Even hinted that he might go bring in Derek all by himself. <laughs> That's right, Sheriff. You should have heard him. You ought to make me clean the deputy. <laughs> hey, hey, Sheriff. Sheriff. You better come take a look, Prado. What's up? John Mickley's coming up the street with three ambry sides of the horses huh? and holding a gun on him. It can't be. Well, it was a great day. I gotta see this. So do I. Right. Come on. Golly, it is me, yeah, too. Yeah, Hi, right, Sheriff. I got a few outlaws for you to put in jail. <laughs> what is this, John? How in thunder That one you... there's Bill Derrick. There's a big reward for him, I understand. Uh, the money they stole from the bank is in his saddlebag. Holy smoke, Sheriff. The bank money is here in the saddlebag. John, how'd you ever do it? We thought you were just talking local. What a man he turned out to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he may be a little man. But we gotta admit he must be plenty tough to round up these outlaws. That's right, yeah. That's right. John, I'm sorry I misjudged you. You'll get the reward on Derek, all right, and the reward from the bank, too. Hey, John, John oh, 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 Coyote, I've been hunting for you after the wild tale you told at the cafe today. Now you get out of here. Just a court. minute, Matty. See them three tough looking hombres sitting there in them saddles, so sorry like? Mm -hmm. I see him. Your husband, John, just captured him. What's more? One of them's Derek, one of the toughest outlaws in the oh, territory. You say my husband captured him? You can take the sheriff's word for it that I just brought him in, Matty. What's more, I ain't going home till I'm good and ready. Yeah, well, that's the way to talk, John. Yeah, sure, how tough you are, John. Matty, you'll let you be boss <laughs> now, I bet. Great jumping catfish. And to think I ran him out this morning with a broom. Reckon I just ain't the type to get tough with a female, Matty. But every man's got limits to his temper. That's uh, talking. Of course, John. I remember. Yes. Now tell us, John, just how on earth did you do it all by yourself? Yeah, come well, on. as a matter of fact, Sheriff, I guess I'd better tell uh, you... If it wasn't I... for the Lone Ranger, he wouldn't be here. No, I... Lone Ranger! <laughs> Man alive, John. You turned out to be so tough when you met up with those crooks, no. that Derek thinks you're the Lone Ranger without his mask on. <laughs> That's sure a hot one. Put those crooks in jail, man. I'm sick of looking at them. All right, come on, get on. Imagine John Meekly getting outlaws to thinking he's the Lone Ranger. What do you think of that, boys? Ain't that something? <laughs> We'll rejoin the Lone Ranger in just a moment for a word about his next exciting adventure, Matter of Revenge. And now, here come the clues. The clues to help you figure out who the new Lone Ranger mystery deputy is in the second of Cheerio's four big contests. Yes, you've already heard the voice of the new Lone Ranger mystery deputy. And now we're going to give you special clues. Ready? Listen. He's over six feet tall has brown hair and plays the accordion. 
During the war, he was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his leadership of a squadron of bombers. He works for a company whose initials are MGM. Who is he? There are your clues. Now, don't wait another minute to enter this big contest if you think you know this very famous person. Here's what to do. Just name the mystery deputy and tell us in 25 words or less why the man you have named deserves the honor of being a mystery deputy. Follow the easy contest rules printed on entry blank, which you can get from your grocer. Be sure to include your name and your grocer's name. Send your entry together with a top from a box of that swell-tasting breakfast cereal made from oats all ready to eat, Cheerios. Mail to The Lone Ranger, Box 100, Minneapolis, Minnesota. We'll have new and different clues for you on the next regular Lone Ranger broadcast. Remember, there are hundreds of prizes in this amazing contest, and you've got a mighty good chance to win up to $4,000 in cash. Who is the Lone Ranger Mystery Deputy? Now, here's the Lone Ranger. Look like fire for any bank, Yes, Tom Hanlon's farmhouse. The sister and her ten-year-old boy, Tommy, are trapped inside. It's dangerous to go in after them. I know. We'll have to get them out. We'll have to go in after them no matter how dangerous it is. Hurry, Tunnel, hurry! One, two, three, come! Be sure to listen to this next thrill-packed Lone Ranger adventure. Say, living's getting better all the time. Imagine now you can bake real Betty Crocker cakes from mixes. Sure, Betty Crocker's three new mixes, party cake, devil's food, and ginger cake, are Betty Crocker recipes measured out more scientifically than they could be at home. No wonder your cake-baking success is sure. Try party cake for yellow, white, or spice cake. Devil's food for chocolatey cake that makes folks take notice. They're fresh egg mixes, of course. Betty Crocker wants you to add fresh eggs to get consistently better cakes. Try Betty Crocker ginger cake, too. It's spicy, rich as gingerbread, tender, light as cake. Made from cake flour, not from bread flour. These aren't ordinary cake mixes. They're Betty Crocker cake mixes. Try all three. You have just heard another of the famous Lone Ranger stories, a copyrighted feature originating in Detroit. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. Adventure lovers, tune in tomorrow night, same time, same station, for another thrill-packed show. Counter Spy, presented by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Right, two glassfuls of delicious Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. Twice the tangy taste, twice the natural goodness, twice the Pepsi. Take a carton home, America's biggest cola value. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Why take less when Pepsi's best? This is ABC, the American...